Welcome to The Ambassador, a prophetic teaching ministry designed to help win the nations and equip the saints. And now, join Craig DeMoe with his special guest. Well, God bless you and thank you for joining us for the Tuesday broadcast. And I have with me again, Mark Anderson to join me. And he's talking with us this week about the authority that God has given to mankind. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Glad to be with you again. Amen. And I am really glad that you're here talking about this subject. If people don't exercise authority over their own life, somebody else will. It's kind of like your career, you know. If uh, you don't decide what you want to do with yourself, then somebody else will decide for you because a lazy man, the Bible says, will have to come under forced labor and somebody else is going to make the decisions for them. And we're at a time right now where there's forces that the enemy is using, actually people that the enemy is using to try to exercise authority over them. And we see all of this fear over a pandemic with the coronavirus and all these kinds of things. This is such a great opportunity for God's people. This is a time for us to rise up and take our authority and not submit to all of the fear and the panic and all those kinds of things. I just think it's really, really important that we are talking about authority at this particular time. Now, in uh, chapter two of your book, The Authority Given to Mankind, you say some really important things. And I'm thinking here in this chapter two is called Extreme Sovereignty Ditch and Greek Philosophy. And you go into a little bit of a history about why many times we don't exercise authority. And I'm just going to read a little bit from the first part of that chapter. It says, when the righteous rise up in authority and humility to rule, whether in government or to use their authority for healing, miracles or deliverance, people will rejoice and praise, glory, and honor will go to our great God. But if we do not understand authority and its importance in society, the wicked will fill that void and people will groan and complain. Let me share with you one of the biggest stumbling blocks in Western Christianity in rising up with the authority that was given to mankind. And then you go into an explanation of what you're calling extreme sovereignty teaching. And I'd like you to just talk about that a little bit, what that is and where that came from. One thing I should say is uh, the scriptures, you know, should be our final authority. Amen. And one thing when it comes to authority... Christians or people on this earth can use their authority. I put it in three different categories. Let me just share some on that. One, every person born on planet earth, it says in Genesis 1, was given authority. doesn't matter who they are or what they become. You have authority just by being born on this planet. Three things can happen with that authority. You can either use your authority to do good on this earth and in partnership with the Holy Spirit. One thing people need to realize is we have authority, but in and of ourselves, we don't have the ability to carry out that authority. So number one, you can use your authority to do good on this earth, but you have to work in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Number two, there's people that are using their authority to do evil on this earth. They're working in partnership with demon spirits. But I, I would say most people on this planet, and I would say most Christians on this planet, here's where they fit is all they do is they sit on their authority. They don't use it at all. They don't use it to do good. They don't use it to do evil. They're just sitting on it because they don't understand that they have authority. Right. And I think it's so important that you understand and rise up in your authority. You know, the early church warned us about false doctrine that would come in. Like, for example, James. In the book of James, chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, these are pretty strong words by James. He said, Be not deceived. Every good and every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. You know, God is a good God. Yes. And he does good things to his children. Jesus told us this, and he he was talking about religion. And he was also, I believe, talking about Satan in in John 10.10, where he says, The thief comes not but for to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come to give abundant life. Right. God is a good God. He's in a good mood. He cares, and he does good things for us. The scriptures are very plain. It's basic Christianity 101, but so many Christians have forgot this. 
God is a good God and Satan is bad or evil. Yeah. And God does not work in partnership with the devil to do good in, or bad things in your life. Yeah. And here's where a lot of it came about. There was a lot of warnings about certain false doctrine and a lot of the influence of Greek philosophy was even in Jesus' time, in the early church time. But it really took root around 400 A.D., when a man by the name of Augustine came along, and he, he said things like this. He was, first of all, he was a Greek scholar, a very intelligent man, brought a lot of good to Christianity, but he was a Greek scholar. When he got saved, he brought much of his Greek philosophy into Christianity, and the influence of Greek philosophy is so strong on Western Christianity that I would say most Christians in Western Europe and America are more influenced by Greek philosophy than they are by the Bible. Right. Here's something Augustine said. Augustine said, everything good and bad that happens in this life is the will of God. And he even went on to say, don't question it. Don't say it's of men or of angels. It's the will of God. So basically, he said, God will do both good things to you and he'll do bad things to you. And we're not to question it. Everything is the will of God. Well, mm. if we take that attitude, you will not use your authority. And I would say most people that believe that way, I call it the extreme sovereignty belief. A lot of it comes from Calvinism, from Augustine, from even from Martin Luther, a lot of our Western Christian yes. uh, church leaders. If your mindset is such that God does both good and evil, you'll never really see miracles, healing, signs and wonders on right. a regular basis. Yes. And you'll never tap into your authority. It's totally contradictory to what God gave mankind in the beginning of time. Either we have to understand that every person born on this earth has authority and we need to right. rise up and yes. begin to understand how to operate in authority, how Jesus restored that authority to those who are following him. Uh, when he said, all authority is given unto me, both in heaven and earth, and then turned around and gave it back to, to his followers. Yes. Yeah. Amen. You know, it, it's really ironic that we think God is going to give us his word. He's going to reveal his mind to us. And yet uh, we're not supposed to do anything with it. You know, and that's kind of, if you follow it logically, that's kind of where a teaching of extreme sovereignty takes you. Like, what's the point of God telling you what he thinks if he doesn't want you to take what he thinks and change things with it? That's correct. And if everything comes from God anyway, then why would he need to tell you anything? I mean, just let things happen. But praise God. Uh, I want to just stop right here and give you a, a quick announcement. Then we'll be right back with more. If you want to be used of God in the ministry of healing and deliverance, then you'll want a copy of Mark Anderson's powerful book, The Authority Given to Mankind. In writing this book, Mark draws from decades of ministry experience all over the world, which has brought healing and deliverance to many thousands of people. And the principles found in this book have trained effective gospel leaders throughout Europe and Asia, as well as North and South America. As you study the authority given to mankind, you'll come to understand how to change the spiritual realm in order to release miracles, healings, signs, and wonders. To know who you are in Christ and to learn how to operate with your God-given authority, request The Authority Given to Mankind by Mark Anderson, available now for a gift of just $15 or more per copy using the contact information at the end of the broadcast. If you prefer the Kindle version, don't forget to include your email address. God bless you. Well, there you have the information about how to get a hold of Mark's book, The Authority Given to Mankind. And I want to just say to you, you need to read this book. I'm telling you, it will empower you. It will help straighten out your thinking in some areas. And God will use this to help you use that which Jesus shed his blood so you could have, and that's your authority. Mark, uh, continue on just telling us more about this. Jesus made it very plain. He's the creator of the world. And in the beginning of time, Genesis 1, 26 through 28, it says that God created us in his image and likeness yes. and, and gave us authority over all creation, even over the creeping things that creep on the earth, which right. if we have time, I'll get back to that. But we have that authority. Uh, mankind lost that when Satan came along creeping on the earth in the form of a serpent. And 
gave his authority over to Lucifer. Jesus came back, restored that authority. Jesus, and we'll get into this in another session, but Jesus stripped himself of his deity. He did not operate in his divine authority and power when he came to earth. He came in the, it says in Philippians 2, he came in the likeness of man. Right. And he came, one of the reasons he did that is because he gave those who born on this planet, he gave them authority and we're to rise up and operate in that authority. Jesus was the perfect example. One of the things he said in the Lord's Prayer, he said, pray this way, pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Is there sickness and disease happening in heaven? Come on. Is there sex slave trade taking place in heaven? Are there hurricanes in heaven? Are there pestilence? Is there wars and famines and poverty in heaven? No. We are to reflect heaven right. on this earth Amen. according to that prayer. But if everything that's happening in this world is God's will, then why bother praying that prayer, Lord, your will be done Come on. on heaven as it is on earth, if right. everything is your will. So we really need to understand and rise up and start operating in that authority. Jesus came to earth, and as a result, he had authority because he came in the likeness of man. Amen. He didn't do any miracles till he was age 30. That's when he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, it says in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Holy Spirit helped Jesus carry out his God-given authority. And Jesus went on to say, before he went to the cross, he said, most assuredly I say to you, the works that I do, you will do also. Only greater works shall you do because I go to the Father. So praise God. We're going to leave it right there for today. But be sure to join us on tomorrow's broadcast. Mark will be with me to share more. Follow us on Twitter at Ambassador Min. That's Ambassador M-I-N. Like us on Facebook.com slash Ambassador Ministries. Or if you're on your own Facebook page, search for Craig Demo. Thanks. I want to say something else about Mark Anderson's book. We produced the announcement about this before I was aware that you could obtain this great resource on Amazon at a very reduced rate in the electronic version. And if you don't have a lot of money right now, I want you to have this so much that I'm going to tell you to go ahead and go around me and just get the book. That's because it will change your life. On the other hand, if you can help us with an offering to stay on the air, by all means, order it through Ambassador Ministries. Now, you might remember that I'm planning on leaving for Thailand next week. A lot of people are having their travel plans canceled because of all the worries over the virus. To me, this is exactly the time that we should go. After all, we have the authority over the works of the devil and people need to be set free. I'm taking a team and I ask for your prayer covering as well as your financial support. Please obey the Lord in whatever he tells you to do. As I leave you today, let me remind you, my friend, that you are God's ambassador. You're his representative on the earth. Bye for now. You've been listening to The Ambassador with Craig Demo. Your testimonies and prayer requests are very important to Craig. Please write Ambassador Ministries, P.O. Box 19561, Portland, Oregon, 97280. This ministry is sustained by the faithfulness of God through our partners and friends. To find out more about partnering with the Lord through this exciting ministry, contact Ambassador Ministries, P.O. Box 19561, Portland, Oregon, 97280. Our web address is ambassadorministries.us. That's ambassadorministries.us. May God richly bless you.